So we're working on the diesel heater box. This is an Apache 4800 box from Harbor Freight. That is a Vivor um, 8K motor. Um, from what I understand, the 8Ks are pretty much the same as a 5K. Um, I don't really see any big difference here. But what we're going to do is go ahead and um, cut this box. We're going to have the uh, intake side on this side and then the heat side coming out of here. So as you can see, um, I already have that cut. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and fit this in the box now and see how that fits. And then we're going to continue on with the electrical and routing the intake. Okay, we have the intake part in. And what I did is just put a little bit of clear silicone around the edge. Um, right here, I'm going to take a uh, two inch hole saw and I'm going to cut for this piece. And what we're going to do is cut right there and put that through about halfway. Um, this is where the fresh air is gonna suck in from. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. Okay, we got that in. Um, we're just using a little bit of a flex shot, clear silicone, just to kind of hold some things in place and um, to take up any gaps that we may have around the cut. So we're gonna go ahead and let that dry. Uh, once this is dry, I'll go ahead and run uh, the tubing from there to there. Um, but next I have to come over here and cut that side. Um, so what we're gonna be doing is taking that piece right there and I have two of them. And then what we're gonna do is double them up like so and then pass them through the box um, and then take this hose right here onto there and then that's gonna connect right there and we're going to do a pass through right there so that's what we're going to do next um, we're going to let this dry and tack up before i start moving things around um, then we'll go ahead and get that that side and then we'll start working on uh, the fuel side with a one and three quarter inch you'll want to go ahead and cut the hole on the opposite side and uh, this will be for the exhaust um, what i did was i used a little bit bigger than the exhaust um, piece right over there next to the drill. Um, I don't want it resting on the plastic. I'm going to go ahead and use the rubber um, gaskets that come with it. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in now. Next, we're going to go ahead and run the, um, this is a three inch manifold plate and we're going to mount that right here. There's a little tab right at the top here. I'm going to have to grind that out because I, I want this to sit as flush to the top as I can. Um, so we're going to go ahead and grind that out now. And then here you can see on the inside, I went ahead and just, uh, Put those little bolt protectors uh, on there i had laying around from another project they're nice if you ever get your hand down in there at night you're not gonna cut yourself or hang it up on that screw so let's go ahead and drill the next hole so when you get your hole cut what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your flange and set it inside there nice good fit nice and flush up here at the top then you take your second one and then you're gonna mount it just like that and then drill the four holes to mount it. And then on the inside of the case, that's where the supplied hose will connect to the actual heater. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill these bolts out Hold now and then I'll go ahead and show you how I'm gonna connect the heater hose. So I determined that I will need five inches of this heater hose. Now you may be different, depends on how much you want to collapse this down, but I did give myself an extra inch um, of pulling this back um, and then clamping it so it's nice and flush up on the heater. And then when you put your clamps in, uh, I like all my clamp settings to be on the same side um, where it's easy to adjust. That's why I didn't do it on this side. I have more space over here. 
but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put the, the bolts in there and bolt that to the front um, with uh, this piece out on the outside so that I can run the heater hose to my tent. So I just cut a piece of six and five H tube that comes in the kit and that's going to go for the air um, intake. So I'm just going to go ahead and route this corner to that corner and uh, go ahead and use the supplied clamps on that. But then I'm going to get some better clamps for the exhaust side. So we're about ready to go ahead and solder up the leads. Um, to the switch right here. Uh, this is the switch the that goes on the plug side that's going to run to the EcoFlu, and then this is the plug that runs to the diesel heater. Now on the back side of these plugs they're labeled one and two so I'm going to make sure that whatever I put in um, slot number two here um, I have to make sure is the same on this side. Um, and then what I'm going to do with this one is I've had um, purchased one of these um, kits where it has a cigarette plug lighter on this side and then this is going to go to the EcoFlow and then what I'm going to do is just cut off the end over here and then solder this lead um, into this one. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now and just make sure that you know before you start soldering you run the wires um, through the hole because once you um, solder this to this pin, you won't be able to fish the wires back through. So we got that soldered up. Um, the red is going to be one and the ground is going to be number two. So what I'm going to do, um, just so nothing hits this in the case, is I'm going to put a little bit of hot glue over each, each one um, just to kind of add an extra layer of protection that something doesn't accidentally hit that and cause some sparks or something to short out so I'm just going to throw a little bit of hot glue on each uh, just to give that a little bit of added protection there is like a plastic divider but I'm just going to go ahead and shoot some hot glue over them um, and uh, protect those a little bit so we have our harness um, finished as you can see it is plugged into the EcoFlow River Max this is a 600 watt power supply. Um, I just went ahead and put some shrink wrap on there uh, that has a glue in it and it's holding that firm. As you can see, the cable, we have a lot of cable. Everything is nicely wrapped. It's plugged in. Right now we're just currently testing for power, nothing else. Um, I just wanted to see if the uh, monitor would come on and as you can see it does so I'm not going to do anything else um, until I get the fuel pump put in the fuel tank the exhaust ports ran and everything but as you can see here it does have power so we're going to go ahead and move on to the next step so it's time to start thinking about where I'm going to put the um, fuel pump and the fuel line um, I want to try to keep the gas tank as flat to the ground because I don't want it to be top heavy because it's fairly large. So what I'm thinking is, is I'm going to drill the um, pickup tube right there on the side and then it can enter through the bottom of the box. Um, so it's not technically just picking up any type of debris from here. It will have like a, you know, a little cutoff line where it won't pick up uh, any debris if there's any in the fuel because it's quite not sucking it from the bottom. Uh, so I'm going to try this and hopefully this works out. So in the kit uh, you have these two rubber uh, o-rings. So I'm going to go ahead and put the one for the inside in and then when it comes through and we attach the nut, um, I'm going to make sure that it has two o-rings, one on the inside, one on the outside. I'm just going to use this extra cable that I have left over and I'm gonna fish it through the cap and out through the bottom. So you can see the O-ring there, we got it fished through. Um, I do have to, you know, thread it through, but I just wanted to show I have the O-ring on the inside, the O-ring on the outside, and then we're gonna fish the nut on. Once it's locked down, I'll push the wire back through and then we'll take that out. So I just got done cutting in my vent. You can kind of see the three holes there 
Um, this is a piece of an aluminum vent uh, that I took from an old PC that I had and went ahead and cut it down. Now, it was pretty simple. So I'll show you the inside of the box here where you can see how I cut the three holes. So let's just go ahead and open this here. So there's the three holes and I just cut slits in the bottom of the plastic, pushed the aluminum tabs through and bent them over. Uh, they fit really nice and snug. So we have the fiberglass wrap um, sitting in a bucket of water. This is going to help um, the neat, the little fiberglass um, shreds that come off. Um, make sure that you have a good pair of gloves. Um, what we're going to be using here to wrap the exhaust. Um, I just went and picked up at the AutoZone. So we're going to use this uh, to wrap that exhaust piece. Um, I have it soaking in water just again to cut down on the fibers. You can see and that and as gloves you can see that reflection that's the little fiberglass hairs that come off so we're going to go ahead and wrap this and i'll show you what it looks like um when it's done Now we burned all the fibers off the exhaust. I'm gonna go ahead and wire brush the exhaust um, outlet there and over here. And I'm gonna put an exhaust sealer on there. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean that up now. Now that I have the surfaces dulled down and the shiny has been knocked off, I'm gonna use some muffler uh, tailpipe sealer. I'm gonna go ahead and apply a good heavy coat to those parts. So the fuel pump is mounted with the fuel filter. We have the fuel line running from the backside of the tank through the center of the lid. Mounted on someone as an angle, it says it cannot be mounted parallel. And then I have a controller up there at the top. Uh, just kind of mounted um, on the holder but loosely so I can close the lid uh, start the unit let it heat up open the lid real quick put the controller back and it will stay in there and I will just use the remote but here is the box finished and I will post another video of it operating